Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Yesterday I was going through my image catalog. Specifically, I was looking at all the photographs I have of zoo animals. And what I found is that many of those photographs were spoiled because the enclosure that the animal happened to be in was a little bit too prominent in the scene. So I had the thought to try to use Photoshop's generative fill to see if it could fix that issue. And I'm happy to say it can. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use generative fill in Photoshop to make zoo animal images look more natural. Now I have a couple different photos to show you. I have this image of the American bald eagle and you can see the chain link fence behind the eagle is really obnoxious. I'd like to fix that. And then I have this image of the giraffe and of course the giraffe, as you can see, is inside the giraffe house. I'd like that to look a little more natural as well. Let's start with the image of the eagle. Now, if you're not familiar with generative fill in Photoshop, currently it's only in the beta version of Photoshop, not in the regular version of Photoshop. If you are a Creative Cloud subscriber, you can download the beta version of Photoshop and at the end of the video, I'll show you how to do that. Now, what you need to do is you need to select the part you want to replace. Specifically for this image, I need to select everything but the eagle, right? Maybe I'll leave that branch in the foreground there, but I need to select the stuff behind the eagle. The easiest way to do that in Photoshop is to actually select the eagle first and then just invert the selection. So to select the eagle in Photoshop, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to select and then down to subject. And you'll see that I'll have these marching ants going all around the eagle. Now you'll notice around the eagle's head specifically, not all the feathers are selected that well. Don't worry about it. You don't need a precise selection. So. If there is though, I should say, if there is a big chunk of the subject that isn't selected, you can then use a selection tool. For this case, let's say the shoulder of this eagle is not fully selected. And if I wanted to make sure that was selected, I would use the quick selection tool. Quick selections tools keyboard shortcut is the W key. Just make sure that you're actually using the quick selection tool when you hit the W key, because there are three different selection tools that share that keyboard shortcut. And then I'll just come in and I'll select the shoulder of this eagle that isn't selected down there. That's it. So if there's any part of the subject that isn't selected, use the selection tool to select it. Now we have the subject selected, but I mentioned we get rid of that background. So we need to select that. So we're going to invert this. On a Mac, hit Shift Command I. On a PC, hit Shift Control I. Now you'll notice a subtle difference in the marching ants. They're now going around the outside of the frame and around the eagles. Um, itself. So we got just the background selected. Now we're going to use generative fill. So we're going to go to this contextual taskbar. I'll move it up here. We're going to click on generative fill. And of course it moves back down to the bottom. So we'll click on it again and bring it up here. And what I found, here's the tip, the more descriptive you get here, the worse it does. So the more vague you are, it seems to do a better job. So I'm just going to type in blue sky. If I typed in blue sky with branches and clouds or something like that, it's going to do a horrible job. So just type in blue sky and then click generate. Now, again, for those of you not familiar with generative fill, it's going to come up with three different examples and you then have the option to do it again and get three more examples and you can keep doing that until you get one image that you really like. So you could see it replaced the chain link fence background. It puts some branches back there. I don't particularly like that one. Here's another version. I like this one a little better. Maybe a little busy back there, but it looks better. And then the last example it gave is right here. Now you'll notice one thing I want to make you aware of. It does alter the subject a bit. We didn't have that great of a selection around the head of the eagle. And you'll notice between these three examples, it is altering the feathers, the feather detail around the edges of the eagle's head. So you have to kind of be okay with that because it will do that. Now, um, I kind of like this one. Uh, if you didn't like it though, you could just go over here and click on gener generate again, and it will come up with three more examples. And you could keep doing that until you find one that you like. But really any of those three, in my view, is probably better than that obnoxious chain link fence that was behind the eagle. And here's our fourth example. Here's our fifth example, and here's our sixth example. So any of these you like, try that out. 
So it, I think, as you can see, it does a pretty good job. Now let's go over to this image of the giraffe that is inside the giraffe house. Same thing here. I need to get a selection of that background, but the easiest way to do it is to select the subject and invert it. So we're going to go up to select and we'll select subject. And you'll see it has a selection of the giraffe. Now here, you notice how the whiskers on the giraffe here aren't selected at all. If you really have some fine detail that you want to come over when you do the ultimate generative fill, well, do it. All right, so in this case here, um, I am already in a selection tool. I'm just going to go to Select and Mask. And you can see that the whiskers aren't selected. So what I'll do is I'll just try Refine Hair. This is tough. And you can see I brought back much of the whiskers, not all of them, but much. So I'll just say, that's all right. I'm going to go with that. We're going to output it to a selection. And I'll click OK. So we have now our selection. We have, you can't see it, but we have some of those whiskers selected. But we need to invert this again. So hit Shift Command I on a Mac, Shift Control I on a PC. Now it's inverted. Now we'll get our contextual taskbar, move it up here. When I click on Generative Fill, it's going to go back down to the bottom because it's crazy like that. And then we'll take it and I'll move it up here again. And here again, I'm not going to get crazy, you know, um, you know, trees with sky behind, with mountains, nothing like that. Don't get too descriptive. Just type in blue sky and click generate and again it will come up with three examples and hopefully one of those three will be the one that i think is perfect but if it doesn't again you just click generate a second time and you'll come up with three more you don't like those click generate a third time you'll come up with three more so there's our first one that looks pretty good you see the whiskers are kind of in here here's that one and here's that one that one puts some like a tree behind it See how it will kind of determine what the subject is? I think the AI uh, in Photoshop's, you know, beta generative fill feature, I think it kind of recognized that there, this is a giraffe and it put a tree behind it. Now you click generate again and see if it comes up with three more. But you, I think you could see how you could use generative fill uh, on those zoo images where the zoo enclosure is just a little bit too obnoxious and you'd like to just have everyone focus more on the animal and not so much on the enclosure. Here's a house and there's some sky and there's an old house there. So we're getting a little crazy there. But any of these first three I think are pretty good. So you can see, but see how it alters the um, subject a little bit. So you have to be okay with that. Um, because it will do that. But that's it. That's how you could use generative fill to get rid of uh, the obnoxious enclosures that zoo animals happen to be in. Now, I mentioned that generative fill is a feature of the beta version of Photoshop, and all Creative Cloud subscribers can download it. Uh, to do that, open up your Creative Cloud app. When you open up your Creative Cloud app, go to Apps, then down here on the left-hand panel, just go down to you see beta apps. Click on that. And here are all the different beta apps. At least I could uh, download with my plan. If you have the Lightroom Photoshop plan, I think you'll just be able to download the Photoshop beta. Uh, but if you have the plan like I do where I have all the, uh, the um, different Adobe apps, I could download all these. But either way, just go to where it says Photoshop beta and it will say install. Mine says open because I obviously have it open. So uh, just download it and then you'll have it and it will run side by side with the current version of Photoshop. So you don't have to worry about it overwriting the current version of Photoshop and the beta version being full of bugs and not operating properly. It will run side by side and you'll be able then to use generative fill on your zoo photos. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.